church, shall we rise? So I just wanted to read a short passage from our B2B uh, this week. Um, the part that says, uh, The Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. So this context is that he's talking to Moses about uh, Moses' request uh, for God's presence to be with him, for God to show him his glory. And then the Lord said, "Um, there's a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back. But my face must not be seen. So I thought this particular passage, um, this area, actually stood out quite a lot to me. Um, It was Moses' request to see God's presence and have God's presence with him. But yet God's presence was too much for any human to imagine or have sight. And God's solution was to protect Moses and have his presence pass him by so that Moses will know that he's there. I think in the same way in our lives, in the small things, in the big things, um, I think that's what God has been doing for us and I hope we can remember that and remember how he is with us through all these instances and his protection is really over each and every one of us. In yeah, So I thought we could ponder upon that as we start to worship him today.
Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together loving, all together worthy, all together wonderful to be. Here I am to worship. Here I am.
indeed, Lord, it is your presence that we seek, Lord. In your presence, we can find refuge, we can find strength, Lord. Lord, grant us this presence so that, Lord, we can experience the reality of what your word has promised. That, Lord, in you we have no fear and that nothing shall ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, Lord. So let us experience, allow us to experience, give us this privilege to experience your presence, Lord. Lord, as we travel through life's challenges, as we experience the difficulty of growing up, of raising family, of even growing old, Lord, we want to seek your presence, Lord. We want to hear that still small voice that will warm us strangely when we feel down, that will, that will encourage us when we are feeling despair or about to give up, Lord. Lord, we want to experience your presence so that our fellowship with you can be strong. And as we make decisions, Lord, so many of these in life, Lord, that we can make godly decisions in your presence, Lord. Lord, this is the intimacy that we seek and help us by granting us this presence so that, Lord, you can sustain us as we grow weary and tired in life's journey. Lord, for those who are not well among us, Lord, we seek a double portion of your presence, a very intimate pre form of your presence, Lord, so that, Lord, they will not become bitter or they will not give up, Lord, but they will continue to trust in you. Lord, I pray also for the same for those who are seeking financial help, career difficulty, Lord, I bring them up before you that you be gracious and merciful to them. Lord, speak to them through their daily devotions with you. Speak to them through in surprising ways so that, Lord, they will know that you will continue to provide and sustain them, Lord. And Lord, for, for the young people who are, who are making so many decisions, facing so many choices in life, Lord, I pray that, Lord, they will continue to seek you and not be, not be distracted by so many things around them that they will continue to sense your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we want to bring before you our pastor, Lord, as he, as he has to oversee three congregations, we give, ask that you give him strength and wisdom and ability, Lord, so that, Lord, he is able to do so and able to do so confidently, Lord. And we pray for Dr. Samuel Wang, the speaker for today. We ask that, Lord, you will enable him, you will, you will put your words into his mind, bless his lips and his mind so that Lord he will deliver a message that will encourage us that will transform us Lord that will challenge us even Lord we thank you for this privilege of coming together in this manner as a congregation we thank you and we pray all this in Jesus name Amen okay please be seated some uh, family news okay uh, of course, we have our usual CU corner after service, and we are very privileged to have with us uh, Dr. Samuel Wang, Reverend Dr. Samuel Wang from uh, Lutheran Church. Which Lutheran Church is that? Huh? Bedok Lutheran Church, yes, all right. Hey, warm welcome. Come on. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, yep, application is now open uh, if you want to get baptized uh, on the 16th of December. Okay, uh, so whether adult or children, you have to go through certain causes. So now it's about time to let pastor know if you want to get baptized. Okay, child baptism. Okay, all right. Okay, so so please uh, keep pastor informed. Okay, uh, this is a short intro to uh, Dr. Samuel Wang. Okay, uh, he's a pastor from the Lutheran Church. All right, he's uh, currently uh, doing his doctoral study with the Australian Lutheran College. And uh, he's with the TTC as well, and he's also attached to Bedok Lutheran Church. Is it near Bedok Methodist? Uh? All right. Not very. Cannot walk. Uh? <laughs> okay, that's a Bedok Methodist Church. Okay. All right. Um, okay, uh, next. Okay, today is TTC Sunday. But before that, uh, just before that, uh, we got to welcome back Jeannie Chua, right? Mas, right? Yeah, he, she made it back safely. Uh? All right. 
So so you all can ask her during the CU corner uh, whether she, when when she put her leg down into Jordan River whether the river you know dry up or not no all right miraculous things that she has to share okay all right with bullets flying and all that huh? have or not okay all right anyway back to serious stuff huh? okay uh, at the offertory today uh, there is a second box that is next to the uh, the box that is familiar to us uh, that is a second offering for TTC Sunday okay. Uh, later on, there's a video about TTC Sunday, but I just want to let you all know that all, all our Methodist pastors who studied locally, they will probably be trained in a TTC, all right? So, so it's a ministry that we, and a college, that we ought to support. Huh? Okay, so there's a short video now. We can play. We are committed to the church. TTC is of the church and for the church. We are committed to the authority of Scripture and rigorous theological scholarship. We are committed to spiritual formation, seeking to inculcate in our students a heart for God. We are committed to Christian engagement in the public square in our witness for Christ. We are committed to the church in Singapore and in Asia and beyond. We are Trinity Theological College.
Lux Mundi. Okay, uh, so let's give uh, generously towards uh, TDC, all right? So allow me to lead a short prayer, then we will come forward to uh, give forth our offering. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for being a generous God. Lord, for whatever that you have given to us, allow us to uh, give back to you generously towards the ministry and the work of Trinity Theological College. This we give thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. stand to present our tithes and offerings. in scripture reading. So today's scripture reading is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 to 22. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing the evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius and he asked them, Whose image is this? And whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. I'm Dr. Samuel Wang. I'm glad to see you. Um, it's good that I checked up with my bishop which direction the church should be because I thought you were somewhere near Paya Lebar, uh, not Paya Lebar, Geylang, you know, Aljunied MRT there. So thankfully I didn't go the wrong one. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. It's my first time. Um, I'm a father. I have four children. Uh, I pastored about eight years in two congregations in the Lutheran Church and I was then uh, seconded to teach at TTC, uh, affectionately known as Trinity College by some of us, the older generations. Yeah. I was in between when uh, Trinity was at the Mount Sophia uh, before they moved to Hillview area. So I had some years there, and then we moved to Bukitima area. 
Actually, I was quite glad for the move because I actually avoided the mosquito bites. <laughs> because when you come out from your lecture theater and you hang around for your cup of coffee, uh, usually you get some mos mosquito bites at Mount Sophia. Somehow, at, at the new location is much better. And we all know that you know, paying taxes is the way that we get our facilities in Singapore. Huh? Uh, it costs a lot of money to live in Singapore. The tax rate is not as high as other countries, no doubt, but it's increasing. And we can see that in exchange, we get some good roads, hospitals, public transportation, and schools, even the nature parks, you know, uh, the facilities there, they are much better than before. We realize that these actually cost money. So we may even be worried that the rate will go up and up, uh, but we know that this is needed to maintain our excellent infrastructure. It may not be so for some places in the world where they have corrupt governments and high taxes are used to feed that corruption. Well, some might even pay taxes to foreign powers who use those money to feed their armies so that they can oppress the tax-paying citizens. So paying taxes like that is quite hard to do. Now, this was the situation for the Pharisees, the Herodians, and the average person in Jesus' time when they were occupied by Rome. Some argued you should pay taxes like the Herodians. They would say that. Others said, oh, you should not pay taxes like the Pharisees. And there are political and spiritual arguments and consequences for paying taxes. But in this story, we should understand that part of the problem is not about money, not about politics even, or even justice. It is about religion. You see, the Roman Emperor Caesar's image was on the coin. This is for some of them a breaking of the commandment not to make graven images to worship them. Yes, nobody is worshipping Caesar when they pay taxes, but strict religious people say that is his image on the coin after all. So the image of Caesar Tiberius is on that coin. The inscription on that coin says, Caesar Augustus Tiberius, son of the divine Augustus. So paying this tax is a tribute to Tiberius, but it is also going along with his claim that he is divine, that he is a god. For the Judean people, paying taxes is a sellout, not only politically, but spiritually. So the Pharisees, the Herodians, they were united in their dislike for Jesus as he was getting more popular than them. And they think, let's get Jesus to slip up on his answer about this tricky question, like paying taxes. For well, nobody likes to pay taxes to Caesar. So let's see if he will play into our hands and the people will turn against him. Now, Jesus was masterful in his reply. He asked for a coin. Do you have a coin? I actually don't have. I go digital. <laughs> but, you know, over there, when he said, anybody have a coin? Wow. Quickly, somebody brought up, I suppose it's the Pharisees. If the Pharisees are consistent, they should not be carrying any Roman coins, as, as they would think that this is such an affront to God, in their view, right? But when Jesus innocently asked for a coin, it, it was produced quickly. So in the public eye, imagine, you know, uh, there was this camera, you no. Know, and Jesus was on TV, and you have this question being asked of him. And in the public eye, these people who want to trap him, they actually produce the coin with Caesar's image on it. And this is bad, because where is Jesus now? He's actually teaching at the temple, and in God's temple, there should not be any graven image. And here is a coin with an image of Caesar who claimed to be divine. 
So in the public eye, when these people who want to trap Jesus produce that coin, Jesus has an upper hand. In the public's eye, these people are not very consistent now. And Jesus' reply also shocked them. Jesus says, give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Now, he, he knew people don't even like to hold that coin, for it reminds them daily of their betrayal to God. So Jesus is seemingly saying to them, if you don't like this coin with the image of Caesar, just give it back to him. Just give it back to him. So in a masterful stroke, he turned this trick question into an instruction. His instruction is, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. Today, since we do not have any problem with giving back to the government by paying taxes, I suppose nobody is saying that you shouldn't pay taxes, right? Okay. So I, I suppose that's not a problem today. Okay? So if that's the case, then we can stop talking about paying taxes. So now we should start talking about what Jesus says, the second half. Give to God what is God's. Give to God what is God's. And when we look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it tells us that when it comes to the turn for the creating of human beings, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit said, let us make mankind in our image in our likeness. So we are people created in our kind and loving Father's image to look like Him. If you want to know what that means, you can ask your pastor. <laughs> he did a paper on that, right? He said. So I only have to say this. When we confess the creed, we say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you confess the creed? Sometimes, I hope you know what I'm talking about. Uh, this is the Apostles' Creed. So, the first part of the Apostles' Creed confess that I believe in a God who is almighty. He's my heavenly Father, and He creates the heaven and the earth. He creates all things. But what does it mean? Now, Martin Luther also asked this question, and he wrote a little handbook for all Christians to read to understand what the creed says. And so he asked the same question that we asked. What is this? What does this mean? And he answers, I quote him, I believe that God has made me and all creatures that he has given me, my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly, divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. So how many of us believe that? When we see all the things around us, do we ever think that God not only created me, but He created me and gave me all these gifts? He didn't just start and end with creating me. He creates all that I need in this life to support me when He placed me here. And not only that, of course, He supports me in my spiritual life as well. But we'll talk about that later. Luther says, God creates me and he gave all that is needful to support this body and life. And they are all God's gifts to me. 
how can I then give back to God what is God's? He is not asking us to give back all that He had so richly gifted us, is He? No. They are for our support. But at least we should all give thanks and praise to God. That is how we should give back to Him what truly belongs to Him. God deserves our thanks and praise. These belongs to Him. Luther reminds us that it is our duty to thank and praise God. There was a Sunday when I was just greeting my parishioners at the entrance of the church. I say hi to them, welcome them back to church. Then an old member came up to me and smiled and he said, Pastor Sam, do you know what happened this morning? Well, I was curious and said, no, what happened? I was half expecting something bad. Then he said, Every day, as long as I can get up out of bed and stay vertical, mm, I give thanks to God. Praise Him for the life that I still have in this body and I can get up and go to church. Now, this man humbles me. He's deaf in one year. He has pains in his body, especially in his joints. And yet, he bothers to take a bus all the way from Serangoon to Bedok. I think I have to change bus twice just to be there in Bedok physically to worship God. Now, we see how often we didn't do that. When we encounter some difficulties, we think straight away that God is to be blamed. Instead of thanking Him and praising Him, we curse and swear in our hearts. Why God, you give me this kind of body, so wrinkled and old. That is maybe our first get-go. We grumble against Him. Why can't we see that there's a lot that God had given me already to sustain my life here? And not only this physical life, but He had also given me a quality of life that nobody can have without Christ, His beloved Son, who died on the cross for me. Now, the other danger here in this story is that we can apply it wrongly. We can end up compartmentalizing our lives so that God didn't have any say in our secular world. When we hear, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's, we may react by saying, oh, my Sunday is God's. I will serve him well. But when Monday comes, don't touch me. One youth worker said to me, when he called up a young man on a weekday to find out how he's doing, the young man answered the phone and he replied, if this is about church, then talk to me on Sunday. Or else, don't talk to me. <laughs> talk something else. Here, we see that we have sometimes compartmentalized our lives. Even when Jesus says what he said, he is giving himself totally to God, even his very life for us. When we are baptized, we are saying to God, you loved me and adopted me in baptism as your child. Now I want to serve you fully. You see, some people didn't realize baptism is a whole thing. Let me tell you a story. You know the Gauls? They were a warlike people who in ancient times inhabited what is now France and Belgium. They spoke a Celtic language and were druidic by religion. By the time of the Christian era, they had been conquered by the Roman Empire and were supposedly under its control. Now, the extent of this control varied. However, for the Gauls, never did they take well to being a conquered people and there were numerous Gallic uprisings. Now, several Christian missionaries ventured into Gallic territory, and over time, many of the Gauls became Christians. Now, when I say the Gauls, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but if you know the cartoon, what's that? Asterix. Asterix, yes. That is the group of people I'm talking about. Is it pronounced Gauls? I don't know. Now, as the story goes, when a converted warrior was baptized in a river or stream, 
he would hold one arm high in the air as the missionary dunked him under the water. So imagine he was like immersed, right? Go <laughs> three times. <laughs> and his hand is still up there. This seemed a peculiar custom, and the missionaries soon learned the reason for it. When the next battle or skirmish broke out, the warlike Gaul could proclaim, This arm is not baptized. Grab up his club or sword or axe and ride off to destroy his enemy in the most unchristian manner. So you are baptized. Your whole body, your whole soul and spirit belongs to God. Give back to God what belongs to Him. You see, it was an opportune time that this trick question was asked of Jesus. It is Holy Week on Tuesday because Jerusalem and all Judea are full of people coming to celebrate the Passover feast. And this is a time, if Jesus trips up, it will go viral on social media. Everybody will know about it, and his popularity will plummet. But instead of tripping up, Jesus keeps going and going and going. Where is he going? He's going to the cross, obediently, to give his whole life away for you and for me. He went there because... We did not honor God, although we are made in His image, and we belong to Him, but we refuse to give back to God what belongs to Him. And we did not serve and obey Him every day. Hence, our relationship to God is broken. But Jesus, He paid the price for that broken relationship to bring us back to God on Good Friday. That is why He kept on going. He knew his enemies would like to see him put to shame in front of the crowd. But finally, their hatred for him will be so great that they will want him dead. Yet he kept on going. He kept on being in Jerusalem for that whole week. And he knew what will be the end of it. He walked to the cross and sacrificed himself for all his enemies. How much praise and thanks he deserves, my brothers and sisters. How much service and obedience I owe to him. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, give us wisdom to work out the sacred realities of living a life claimed back by you on the cross. When we have to make difficult choices, such as how much time to spend on church projects, how much time to spend with our family members, how much time to spend with friends outside of the church, or even how much to give to the church or to the charities, give us the wisdom of the Holy Spirit so that we can discern correctly how to live our lives in sacred service to you. To those of us who are tired of this division and compartmentalization of our lives, help us, O God, give the whole of life, help us to give our whole life back to you, because you have baptized all of us, the whole person, Let us die to ourselves daily as baptized people and live in freedom to do what is helpful, what is needful, and what is your will for our neighbours. In all things, make us good stewards of life, for all of it is from you, so that we can praise and give thanks to you, for it is our duty. Help us to serve you with love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
to bow down here i am to say that you're my god Lord, you have told us to render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to you the things that are yours. And you have made your mark upon us, Lord, creating us in your image. And we pray, Lord, that throughout this life, truly we will render to you what belongs to you. So go forth and remember the Lord. Go forth and render to him what belongs to him. And as you do so, May you find that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Spirit will be with us all now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated. The service is over. You may want to spend a short time in quiet meditation before you join us for fellowship at the outside the sanctuary. The Lord bless you. <laughs>